Number eight, Krista Lee Philemon. North Carolina woman Krista Lee Philemon, aged 22, was on a pontoon boat with friends on South Carolina's Lake Watertree in July of 2019. The young woman had reportedly graduated at the top of her class at Piedmont High School and had recently started a non-profit organization called Painting with a Purpose, which raised money in support of her local charities. Multiple reports indicated that she was well-liked by those who knew her. At some point during the outing, Philemon, who wasn't wearing a personal flotation device, jumped from the boat along with several others. She failed to re-emerge from the murky reservoir in the moments that followed, and her group called 911. The young woman's body was found two days later near Jutty Point, and it was determined that she'd drowned. No foul play was suspected. Camden Fire Chief John Bowers told a media outlet that there were many unanswered questions about the circumstances surrounding Philemon's death, but no further updates were released following the incident. Number 7. Franklin Freddie Meave Vasquez On March the 9th of 2022, undocumented Mexican immigrant Franklin Freddie Meave Vasquez admitted he'd killed a man aboard a scallop boat off the coast of Massachusetts. In September of 2018, Vasquez, who was then in his late 20s, was aboard the Captain Billy Harper vessel, along with six other crew members. As reported in a Mayday call to the Coast Guard, Vasquez went crazy and started attacking them as they were sailing off Nantucket. None of the victims were identified. According to the Department of Justice, Vasquez first went to the shucking house and hit a crew member in the head with a hammer, knocking him unconscious. He then stabbed the second man multiple times with a long fillet knife on the boat deck. A third crew member was struck in the head with a hammer while he was climbing up from the ice hold and subsequently fell off the ladder. While the captain and remaining crew tried to detain Vasquez, he was able to escape and climb to the top of the rigging mast, where he remained until he was taken into custody by the Coast Guard. The crew member he'd stabbed was pronounced dead by the boat's doctor. Four years later, Vasquez pleaded guilty to one count of second-degree murder, one count of attempted murder, and one count of assault with a dangerous weapon. Number 6. Laura Perry 38-year-old London woman Laura Perry was on a Norfolk Broads hired boat on the River Bure on August 19th of 2020. They were part of a group of nine which included Perry's husband, who was also the nominated skipper, and their three sons. Joining them were also Perry's mother, father, and sister, with the latter operating the 42-foot motor cruiser Diamond Emblem 1. At around 1.18 p.m., the boat's stern made hard contact with the river wall opposite Great Yarmouth Yacht Station. The jolt caused Perry to fall overboard from the rear deck. The mother of three became entangled in a rope and was also caught in the propeller, suffering injuries that resulted in her drowning. In the tragedy's aftermath, an inquiry found that the accident might have been avoided had the Emblem 1 been fitted with a guardrail around its stern. Further recommendations were made by the report to increase the oversight of higher boat handover protocols, particularly regarding large motor cruisers and inexperienced tourists. Number 5. Wilmington River Collision Five people perished over Memorial Day weekend 2022 following a frontal collision between two boats on the Wilmington River in Chatham County, Georgia. The vessels had been traveling in opposite directions when they smashed into each other near the Oatland Island Wildlife Center docks at around 10.30 a.m. The spot where the river is met by Richardson Creek is known as a dangerous area. A bystander alerted the Coast Guard, who launched a helicopter search and airlifted one survivor from the water. Nine people were involved in the crash, two of whom were pronounced dead at the scene and three others who were pulled from the water in the days that followed. Four of them were members of the same Savannah family. They were named as Chris Leffler and his wife Laurie, both in their early 50s, along with their two sons, Nate and Zach. The Leffler's daughter and her friend were among the survivors. According to the Georgia Department of Natural Resources, Savannah resident Mark Christopher Stegel, aged 45, was charged with boating under the influence in connection with the accident. Number 4. Hector Ricardo Brun and Casey Elizabeth Banks Two boaters died in an accident at Canyon Lake in Commel County, Texas on June the 10th of 2022 after they were struck by a propeller. San Antonio residents Hector Ricardo Brun and Casey Elizabeth Banks 
aged 54 and 22 respectively, were on a twin-engine boat along with several others. They were about 100 yards from shore and in water that was 25 to 30 feet deep. Following a preliminary investigation, an official from the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department reported that one of the boat's occupants accidentally throttled or shifted it. In the moments that followed, one or both of its propellers fatally struck Brune and Banks. The tragedy followed two recent drowning incidents on June the 5th and 6th, involving two men both in their 50s. One had tried to swim 40 yards back to a boat ramp, while the other was found face down in the water while wearing a life jacket close to another boat ramp. Number 3. Linda Carmen. In May of 2022, nearly six years after he'd been found floating on a raft on the coast of New England, 28-year-old Nathan Carmen was charged with killing his mother. In September of 2016, Nathan had arranged to go on a fishing trip with his mother, Linda, in his 31-foot boat called Chicken Pox. The vessel sank and Linda died at sea, while Nathan was found floating on an inflatable raft roughly eight days after they'd set out. He claimed that the vessel had started to rapidly take in water, prompting him to make his way to the raft. Nathan maintained that he'd called out to his mother but never saw her again. In 2019, a federal judge in Rhode Island concluded that the young man had contributed to the boat sinking. As reported by witnesses, he'd removed two stabilizing trim tabs from the stern near the vessel's waterline leaving holes that he tried to seal with an epoxy stick. The authorities also suspected that Nathan had been responsible for the murder of his grandfather, John Chakalos, on December the 20th of 2013. Nathan had had dinner with the 87-year-old the night before he was shot three times in the head at his home in Windsor, Connecticut. Earlier in November, Nathan had used his New Hampshire driver's license to purchase a rifle. He was accused of Chakalas' murder in the 2022 indictment, but not charged with it. Investigators suspected that he'd killed both his grandfather and mother in a bid to gain control of the former's multi-million dollar fortune. Nathan's trial was ongoing as of the latest information available on the matter. Today's topic was requested by Dakshayami Ramalingam. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. 2018 Labor Day Weekend Crash Over Labor Day weekend in 2018, a horrific crash on the Colorado River in California resulted in four fatalities and multiple people sustaining serious injuries. It occurred just after 8 p.m. on September the 1st on a stretch of the river between Pirates Cove and the Topok Marina. A southbound 26-foot sleek collided head-on with a northbound 28-foot Hallett boat, which had nine passengers aboard. The latter was operated by 49-year-old Brian Grabowski, and its occupants included Christine Lewis, as well as Kyra Drury and Reagan Heitzig, both in their mid-twenties. Operating the sleek was Victorville man Jeremy Christ, and his vehicle carried five passengers. No charges were filed in the aftermath, as the crash was determined to have occurred due to a combination of factors that included both Grabowski and Chris had been operating the vehicles at unsafe speeds during the time of day with poor visibility and on a narrow stretch of the river. As a result of the devastating impact, all of the people on both boats ended up in the water and the vessels began sinking. Chaos followed as none of them were wearing life vests and started drifting with the current. Some were dealing with crippling injuries or trying to make their way through the dark and fast-moving debris-filled water. Heitzig's sister Jordan suffered a fractured spine at the top of her neck and was knocked unconscious. Her life was saved by her aunt, who was reported as Grabowski's wife, and both women survived after being taken to a Las Vegas hospital. Taylor Corbino, a survivor from the sleek, later recounted, the current was so strong it was moving me around. All of the fatalities were from the Hallett, and in the days that followed, rescue crews recovered the bodies of 51-year-old Lewis along with Drury and Grabowski. Heitzig was missing and presumed dead for nearly two years, until July the 4th of 2020, when a body was found near Blankenship Bend and confirmed as hers via dental records. Number 1. Table Rock Duck Boat Accident 
On July the 19th of 2018, a duck boat operated by the Ride the Ducks Tour headed out on Table Rock Lake near Branson, Missouri, while carrying 31 people. Duck boats were wheeled amphibious vehicles used by the US military towards the end of World War II and in the Korean War. In the late 1940s, a Minnesota veteran converted some of the vessels into attractions and started offering tours. The practice was picked up by multiple businesses in the decades that followed. On July the 18th, the National Weather Service had issued severe thunderstorm warnings. Winds in excess of 60 miles per hour hit the Branson area and generated three-foot waves on the lake. The Ride the Ducks amphibious vehicle built in 1944 had been modified to hold more people, but its stability didn't hold up when it was struck by the storm. A 911 call was sent out at around 7.09 p.m., by which point the boat had capsized and started sinking. None of its occupants were wearing life jackets and 17 people lost their lives, nine of whom were members of the same family visiting from Indianapolis. A number of issues had led to the crash and consequent fatalities, including the crew's failure to heed storm warnings and the boat's build, particularly its overhead canopy, which had hastened the sinking process, trapping passengers inside. The design liability had been highlighted by the National Transportation Safety Board on multiple occasions, but had gone unaddressed. Captain Kenneth Scott McKee was charged with 17 counts of misconduct, negligence or inattention to duty by a ship's officer, resulting in death. Also indicted for multiple felonies was Ride the Ducks Branson's general manager, along with an operations manager. The state charges against the three workers were ultimately dismissed in April of 2022, while all the lawsuits initiated by the accident survivors and victims' families were settled by the Ride the Ducks parent company. The Branson branch was permanently closed in the tragedy's wake. Thanks for watching. Would you rather cross shark infested waters in a boat of your own making or base jump with a homemade parachute? Let us know in the comments section below.